Hello everybody, give me a moment here, because this is Chris and I am about to live stream, but in order to do that, I need to precariously set up my iPhone over my work area. Not the easiest thing to accomplish. Um, but I think I, well, nope, almost did it. Well, what I'm doing is balancing uh, my phone between two uh, hotel trash cans. Yes, I, I won't yell. My fiance explained to me that I was just yelling. Excuse me. Uh, I guess I got excited there. Uh, let me pull up the stream on my laptop at the same time. And uh, that way I can see. Okay, I got to mute that. So. <laughs> and that, this way now I can see the uh, chat room. Hello, Atomicus. Thank you for joining. So this is uh, not as easy a setup as I get to deal with at home. I am currently on a trip. I'm in New York. Uh, hello, Zyke. Hello, Darth Salad. And uh, what I've done is a very light sketch here. Uh, today's Inktober prompt was bait. And it made me think of that classic scene where Roy Scheider's character in Jaws is tossing chum in the water, uh, bait, and uh, the shark jumps out. So I thought that would be uh, something hopefully doable today. Um, it's going to be a little tricky because like literally here I've got like a wall. So I like <laughs> and then this I can't like push my drawing out any further or you won't be able to see it. So it's a really weird setup that I got going on here. It's pretty funny. Uh, let's see. Hello to um, Chris. Hello to James. Hello, Michael. Hello, Samuel. Uh, so <laughs> This is gonna like challenge me though in a good way to use my um, use my whole arm to draw instead of just my wrist um, because I need to move my arm. I have to hold my pen at a weird angle. So let's see. Okay, somebody got back from Joker. Uh, Seth Leoric drew clickbait. Yep, and uh, Joe Helm says he drew the same thing. How about that? Yeah, there's only so many ideas. Uh, I had a few. I was thinking also of potentially like uh, the Piranha from the Piranha movies. Could have been kind of fun. Uh, and then um, I was also thinking that uh, Leatherface essentially baits his victims. So like, because they, they try to like pick up hitchhikers and stuff like that. So I thought that could have been an interesting idea. But uh, ultimately, Jaws is one of my personal favorite movies. I think it's really, really well, well done. And um, it's actually a movie that still sort of scares me. And I think that's just because I saw it at a young enough age. And I grew up in New England on uh, the coast. I, I grew up on, on the beach. So it always felt like something that could literally happen every summer. It would get my imagination going. Um, anyway. So that's my story. But uh, let's see. Um, what? Where is chat? Yeah, okay. So this is not being streamed through... I usually use a program called OBS, and it lets you have multiple different... Uh, inputs. So I usually have a camera on my art, I have a camera uh, showing me, and I have an inset showing the chat. I can't do that. Like I said, I'm on vacation right now, I'm in a hotel room, and I have, all I have are like, you know, my art supplies and my iPhone. So I'm just trying to jury rig uh, something that can work. So yeah, I'm just uh, trying to uh, draw a scene from one of my favorite movies, Jaws, and we'll see how it goes. But um, thank you everyone for joining me. Uh, I'm excited to be back in New York City, definitely a place I'm very fond of. I'm definitely excited to go to uh, New York Comic Con. I'm only going to go I think on a Saturday but uh in the meantime I'm here in the in the Big Apple 
as uh, I once named it. I, I came up with that name. Not too many people know that. MacGyver level. That's exactly what I was saying, Rebel Leaf. I go, I, I said it to, uh, to my fiance. I go, I'm going to have to MacGyver this tonight, like figuring out like how to come up with a contraption to, to do this. Um, but I did it. Uh, actually, I didn't go to New York last year, did I? So, no, I, but did I. It two years ago. Yeah, if you might hear uh, Chrissy in the background, uh, of course she's here in the hotel room with me, and she did mention like how we uh, figured something out two years ago, like a very similar situation. That was the first year I did Inktober, and I was very determined to see it through. So. Um, I was like, if I could do it once, I can do it again. But it's a different hotel room. It's a different scenario. Um, and I'm not great at, you know, caricatures or, like, capturing a likeness uh, without, you know, sort of using direct reference. But, um, you know, I was like, you know what? So this won't look exactly like Roy Scheider, perhaps, but what it... Could could do in in its place is I'll have like more freedom to um, to sort of add some energy and stuff like just sort of go a little bit my own direction. The pose is you know kind of iconic, so I can get that right, and hopefully from there people can sort of recognize what I'm going for. We'll see. Is there a way to draw characters? from away. I don't know what that means. Sorry, Michael. Hello, Black Phoenix. Hello. Let's see. There's a bunch of people that have joined Justin, uh, Jack Jones. How do I feel about the Jaws sequels? None of them are really very good. Two is okay, but it's still not very good. Um, and uh, three and four are outright like laughably bad, so they're kind of entertaining on that level. Given, uh, given this guy a little bit of stubble because, you know, he has been out to sea for a few days when he was doing this. And uh, I think he looks a little more clean shaven in the movie, but my version's going to have a little more chub uh, stubble. Chief. You imagine, like, what a responsibility, what a weird responsibility that would be. But, like, if you were, like, one of the very few... Uh, authority figures in town like yeah who else is gonna go after a shark and, and and try to like you know make everybody in this island town community safe and of course this guy's got a fear of the ocean which uh, just adds some great conflict uh, there's so much to like about it <laughs> Chrissy just joined, jumped into uh, the chat and she says that she remembers me drawing Screech from Saved by the Bell in uh, New York in 2017. Yeah, one of the uh, prompts was Screech. I, I picked up uh, House of uh, X uh, number six. Uh, I, I liked it. I, I still don't know exactly how this is going. I don't know where it's going, so I love it. I love it. Um... So anyway, um, I'm gonna, this is like, I'm, I'm, I'm almost avoiding drawing over here because it's just so tricky to get in at this angle, but I'll just sort of do my best. Okay, that's a little, not quite what I meant to do, but <laughs> I have to just sort of wing it and make it work. Uh, that's so funny. This is such a silly setup that I have right now. <laughs> and this is what you'll be getting for the next several days. Because I'm here through... Well, I guess I leave Monday morning. So let's say that... What's today? Today's Thursday? So you're going to get this uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday too. So you're going to have four days of... Uh, unfortunately, like, this is the best I can do. So uh, hope that uh, hope that uh, some of you still stick with me. I appreciate your, your support. Uh, it's... Uh, it's much more fun to draw when you feel like you're not alone. Um, well, let me make a small addendum to that. Uh, I think it's fun to ink with uh, people because you don't have to think as hard. But I do think it's very challenging to come up with um, a sketch while you're chatting with people. Um, there's just something up, like where I, I personally need a little more quiet. To, to think that through. 
Okay, um, let me see what some questions are. Bah, 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 bah. Powers of X is going to be a major reveal. Yeah, I can't wait. Pa did I just say Powers of X? I believe it's pronounced Powers of Ten. Let's see. I got Screech to sign my bank card while I was in college. His manager was against it. Yeah, I bet he was, but what else is he doing, right? Uh, ain't that the truth? I'm doing Inktober with this girl I met in class. She's way better than me. You know, it's a constant challenge as an artist to um, fight this impulse, but we really shouldn't compare our art to others um, because all you're going to do there is sort of like push yourself into trying to draw like somebody else. And that's not healthy. That's not productive. Um, so you have to like just at, at a certain point go, okay, this person draws better than like, but that's to you, you know, like everybody's opinion is subjective. And it's like, I, of course, think a lot of my friends are better artists than me. And who knows? Maybe they are, maybe they're not. But ultimately, that is just my opinion, you know? If somebody came up and said, Chris, I love your artwork. I love it. Well, it's not really my place to tell them that they're wrong. That's just making somebody feel bad for something and maybe that's a bad example that I'm saying, like, you know, it about me specifically. But it's, you have to, it, it's not healthy to, to um, compare yourself to others. That's, that's my only point, I guess. And it's definitely something that I struggle with. I think a lot of artists do. In one way, it does push us to try to be better. But in another way, it's not productive. What other questions are being asked? Um, don't let it get to me. It drives me to get better. Well, that's cool to hear. That's cool to hear. That's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan of your videos. My favorite one you did was the Spider-Man Spanish comics. Thank you, Michael. That one definitely, um, I appreciate that just because that one took uh, a little more research. And uh, of course, I, you know, it took took me a while to to translate uh, the comic. So I, that, that, that's really nice to hear that somebody liked it. Certain episodes take me longer than others. You know, um, I intentionally give myself every once in a while, a lighter episode, an episode that's just sort of like fun, or maybe about something that I already feel that I know very well. Um, because I just only have so much time and like doing big research heavy episodes or like episodes that are covering a lot of issues well that requires a lot of editing time because um you know it just takes a long time to gather all the images i need to insert into the review so anyway um that means a lot to me it always does when you guys hand out your compliments i i i appreciate it because i i I don't know how to say it, like, you know, without sounding like I'm fooling myself. It's just that it, it takes a lot of work to, to make my show. It takes me a lot of work. Maybe it would take other artists not as long. I don't know. If someone's starting a YouTube channel, what piece of advice would I give? That's from Rebel. Well, uh, I guess first of all, I'd say make sure it's about something you actually care about and are passionate about because a really important thing about doing YouTube is committing to a regular schedule. And it's going to be really hard to commit to a regular schedule if you're not passionate about it, you know? It's not... It, most YouTube channels are not going to take off right away. So you have to be your own audience first. Like, you have to... Be, you, I, I make my show because I enjoy it, you know? Or at least most of it. And as long as I'm getting pleasure out of it good, then it's, it's been worth my time. Um, after that, you know, hopefully you engage an audience that's uh, similarly passionate about what you care about. But like I would just say, like, make sure it's about something you're passionate about and then commit to a regular schedule because that's the only way you're going to make an audience trust you. It doesn't have to be daily. It doesn't even have to be weekly. Just try to be regular about it, regular content. Hopefully that helps. I know it's uh, not much, but, you know, it, it would get more specific depending on what somebody was trying to do their show about. Come back to that here later. 
Uh, what are you drawing? This is uh, the, the chief of police from the uh, movie Jaws. I'm drawing a, uh, a famous scene from that movie. Uh, the prompt today for Inktober was bait. And this is a scene where he's uh, throwing a bunch of chum in the water to attract the shark. He looks away for a moment and all of a sudden the shark is just like right there. Like it, 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 it's not that it necessarily tries to attack him, but it's like right on top of him. And it's just a great surprise. You know, there, th that's a fun thing to think about. Like what are the best scares in um horror movies and let me be more specific not just the best scares the the best surprise scares and i think the one of the shark just sort of popping up there after you've been like sort of watching a scene play out calmly for a while is a great surprise um uh, what are some other movies that have some great surprises um doesn't even have to be a good movie uh there's a movie uh, exorcist 3 and a lot of people forget about exorcist 3 because First of all, Exorcist 1, fantastic, and Exorcist 2, terrible, just garbage. So, a lot of people don't think about Exorcist 3, but it has a fantastic scene where just so like, you're just watching somebody walk in a hospital and all of a sudden this person in a sheet is just right behind them with some uh, cutting shears. Oh, it's, it's so scary. Wow, thank you for the super chat, Massive Panda. He says, that's looking good so far, man. Glad to know someone else is inking right now besides me. Well, there we go. We're going to push each other to uh, to keep going, right? You know, sometimes I feel bad that I like Jaws so much because I actually, um, while I'm a little scared of sharks because of it, I also have a deep love and appreciation for sharks and the role that they play in our oceans you know they're they're a very important part of our ecosystem and they get hunted for the most meaningless things people like hunt them as a trophy and then just like you know they're not eating them they're just killing them for no real reason uh over in like you know china they like this thing called shark fin soup i had it once it's terrible it's just terrible and it's just a real depressing state of affairs that like people so you're like, well, so what? They're eating the animal. Like, you know, we, we need to eat. And, and, and I'm with you so far, but here's the thing. What farmers, uh, farmers, what uh, fishermen do is they just um, cut off the fin. That's the only part they're harvesting. And then they throw the sharks back into the ocean. And now they can't swim and they, they drown. And that's so sad to me. Like, you know, they, that, that's a terrible, like, inhumane way to, to treat uh, these creatures. So anyway, um, I actually uh, really care about like sharks. And uh, so even though I'm a little like scared of them, I, I, I know that that's not completely rational. It's very easy. It's very easy not to get eaten by a shark. You know what you do? You just don't go in the water. That's a very easy option. It's, yeah, it's very easy to not Put yourself in danger from a shark and just allow them to fulfill the role that they have in nature. <sighs> Some different opinions on Joker tonight. That's interesting. I don't know. Chrissy, do you want to see Joker? I did until you talked me out of it. <laughs> I talked Chrissy out of, seeing, of wanting to see Joker. I'm not <laughs> excited. Joaquin Phoenix is a very good actor. I definitely agree with you there. There's there's nothing I can argue there. Did we watch the movie um, Her together? Yeah. That was a good one. It was weird. It was weird, but I just thought he was impressive in that. Yeah. I like there's uh, there's a bunch of movies that like I I don't like love the movie, but I like his performance in them. Um, another one like that was uh, The Master, which I thought would be interesting. It's it's based on a guy that's basically supposed to be like the founder of Scientology, um, and Joaquin Phoenix is in that. I didn't care for the movie. I found it kind of boring, but I thought that Philip Seymour Hoffman and Joaquin Phoenix were delivering amazing performances. Anyway.
they were a bit too sympathetic to Arthur. And that's definitely like the thing I would be concerned about. That's interesting. Let's see, Rebel says, I'd gone on a cruise around the Galapagos Islands. Oh, I'm jealous. That sounds great. At night, the waters were visibly filled with sharks. That sounds really beautiful, though. That sounds really interesting. So, like, yeah, because I'm a little scared, I personally may not be the kind of guy that would either get into a shark cage or, even, or like, go deep sea diving, you know, scuba diving and stuff like that. I may not do that. Maybe I would if I was a little brave on a certain day. But I also, like, find them beautiful, even if I'm a little scared of, of them. Hopefully that makes sense. I wish we all had some of the abilities that sharks have. They, uh, they just, like, constantly have rows of teeth that are, like, just coming in. And so, like, old teeth will just sort of fall out, but they'll have new ones. That sounds nice. Wouldn't it be nice to just sort of get new teeth every once in a while? Instead of having to worry about like brushing them and everything? We have to we have to spend so much time taking care of our teeth. And I do, but it's boring. <laughs> you heard it here first. Comic tropes against teeth care. <laughs> Boo hiss to all that tooth care. Don't let the man trick you. And let your teeth fall right out and you'll be fine. <laughs> oh, those, those dentists, what a scam they're running. <laughs> well, I'm cracking up myself tonight, but I'm also a little punchy. Uh, uh, you know, I traveled all day. Oh, so I watched, you know, a lot of people said like, no, don't do it. But I decided to watch X-Men Dark Phoenix on the plane. And, uh... Oof. Did not care for it, ultimately. One of one of the worst, uh, in my opinion. I literally think X-Men The Last Stand, X-Men 3, may have done a better job with the Dark Phoenix story, and they did not do a good job with it at all. Uh, it started off okay. I was like, oh, you know, this seems average, but not embarrassing. I get it. I'm like, watch you know it's free i'm on a plane something to pass the time i'll, I'll watch this and then at some point and i'm not quite sure exactly when because i wasn't really trying to watch it with a critical eye but at some point it just started feeling so boring to me and i literally fell asleep right towards like right during the sort of whatever the climactic battle was i fell asleep for like you know five minutes or something woke up Everybody seemed fine, and I was like, I guess I didn't really miss anything. So that was a disappointment uh, for me. I know some people have said that they thought it was okay, that they enjoyed it, and, uh, you know, I'm definitely not trying to discount anyone else's opinion, but I did not care for that one. Uh, that, was, that was weak sauce, man. That's what the kids say. Uh, only X-Men movie that was worse was X-Men Origins Wolverine. Yeah, I think I'd agree with you there, Blake. I think I would agree with you, um, although it does have a bit of competition. I would say that X-Men Apocalypse was also a pretty big disappointment for me. That, that one, I was like, oh, cool. You know, the the one right before it, what, what did they do? Uh, Days of Future Past. That was That was pretty good. And I was like, okay, pretty much the same cast and crew. You've got, like, Oscar Isaac playing Apocalypse. That should be good. But then he just looked like a Power Rangers villain. There was nothing interesting about his motivation at all, in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah, did not care for Apocalypse. I think this was worse than Apocalypse, because at least Apocalypse had two or three kind of fun scenes, like, you know, Quicksilver running really fast and doing something set to pop music. They didn't even give us that in this one. There, I guess they were like, "No, we've done that twice." Uh, maybe, maybe a third time would have been good. Days was really good. Yeah, Days was pretty good. D Days was. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying anything bad about Days. Days, Days, uh, Days of Future Past was a decent adaptation of the material and another good performance by Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. I thought they they and it was just fun to finally see this sort of older cast and newer cast 
even though their continuity like makes no sense in those movies like and that that's the thing like the x-men movies they never ever planned ahead they never planned ahead so like characters get reused across the movies uh and, and like played by different actors in different ways um they're just like oh here's a here's a new version of beast here's a new version of uh emma frost you know etc uh they're, they're notorious for it but that said you just go okay whatever you know michael fassbender doesn't really look like ian, ian mckellen but cool there's old magneto and and young magneto got it cool fun So yeah, Days of Future Past was definitely a, a, a fun excursion. And it was a good use of Mystique, who was completely wasted in Dark Phoenix. I won't say exactly what happens and everything, but they could have used almost any X-Men character in her place. Uh, she was They only had her there because, hey, Jennifer Lawrence is an A-list actor, and they were able to basically back up a uh, Brinks truck full of money to, to get her to appear one more time. Magneto's appearance was also pretty forced, but a lot of Magneto's appearances are forced, and he's still an interesting character. Why is Magneto so buff in the comic books? You know, I've always just sort of chalked that up to some sort of side benefit of his mutant power. Um, he, he, he's always just sort of been healthy somehow. Don't ask me how that exactly relates to magnetism, but he has always been, like, really buff, and I just sort of chalk it up to, okay, he lives longer than the average person, and he's, you know, his body is in really good health for, for reasons. Probably could have earned myself a no prize back in the day uh, explaining that one in more detail. Everybody out there remember what no prizes were? Uh, just in case you didn't, because I'm sure plenty of people do, but but some might not. Um, back in the day, before there was like really like internet, the best way to like, you know, interact with your favorite comic book was to mail them a letter. You might get a response, etc. Uh, so Marvel had this thing where if you explained away a problem from one of their comics and said and, and explained how it actually isn't a problem that like here's the the real explanation for what 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 happened they would send you a no prize and all it was was originally an envelope with nothing in it and eventually it was just an envelope with a letter saying like congratulations you got a no prize um i don't think they bother with that anymore because i don't think people really write in uh, trying to explain away that stuff but that was so fun. That was such a nerdy, fun thing that Marvel came up with uh, to engage with their community. An empty envelope. I got a no prize a long time ago. Oh, congratulations, James. That, that's a really cool, unique thing. Like, not too many people got no prizes. It was Because, you know, there wasn't a lot of need for, for no prizes. And what it would, would be is, you know, you, of course you get little continuity errors when different writers take over the same characters and then someone would write in and explain how it's not really a continuity error after all this is what it really is about this is why it's right that requires some creativity um so i always appreciated that Comic tropes uh, could start to give no prizes when without gachapon. Yeah, I could. I could. Letters columns were so much fun. Letters columns were great. I, I was I used to love reading the letters columns all the way, like you know, well throughout the '90s, and then somewhere in the 2000s, once. Uh, once we were able to sort of talk with each other on like forums and chats and stuff like that, and then eventually social media, it just became, I don't know, a little less interesting. But if you look at like some of the early like Fantastic Fours and stuff like that, you will see letter hacks 
that's the name for like people that would write a bunch of letters to comic books. You would see letter hacks like George R. R. Martin. Before he ever became like, you know, the guy that wrote Game of Thrones, he was just a comic nerd like the rest of us writing letters to uh, Fantastic Four talking about what he liked. Um, and he would like write in quite a bit. So that 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 is just kind of cool history. Maybe someday I'll do an episode on like some of the uh, people that wrote in letters and like, you know, that went on to become famous because there's more than a, more than a few. Um, and side note, because they called those uh, people letter hacks, uh, when Walking Dead debuted, I told Kirkman he should name the letters column Letter Hacks, and he did. And actually, I, he printed the letter where I say that, so that was kind of cool. So if you ever want to jump back, uh, that's a tiny piece of Walking Dead history that uh, still has my name attributed to it. I used to read the letters columns first sometimes. Cool. Immortal Hulk is one of the few comics that still has letter pages. Yeah, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jay the Wonder Boy says, I got a letter in the Iron Heart letters column recently, and I don't know why it felt so good, but it was really cool. Of course it's really cool. You're getting printed in a book that you like that, you know, tens of thousands at a minimum get to see. That's, of course, that's cool. It's very cool. That's part of why, like, so we might be past letters, but that's sort of like why I have fan art in my episodes, is I just want to build that community aspect. And I, I, I love that so many people have contributed really interesting ideas um, to the channel. And the only reason I make it, like, be about comic tropes is I also get plenty of email of like just people saying like, hey, I drew Venom uh, in study hall three years ago. Can you print it? And I'm like, oh, if I start doing that, like I'll never have time to edit my episodes. You know, I just I just don't have time to do that. Maybe that's mean. I don't know. I just I, I had to impose a limit somewhere. So my limit just became that it had to be about comic tropes. If there's a better way to do it, I'm open to ideas. But I just didn't want to like be printing every single piece of artwork that somebody has done in the past. After reading Sergeant Spook, did you start believing in ghosts? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm terrified. I, I haven't been able to sleep in years. <laughs> Sergeant Spook, boy, I, I love looking at old golden age stuff. There are some terrible ideas that they were just like, eh, who knows, maybe people will read it. Um, just some really awful ideas. Oh, you know what? I wish I brought my um, gray Copic markers. That would have been so much fun for this particular one to like sort of draw like, you know, the shark and some shading and like, Oh, that would have been fun. I didn't bring them, though. Any thoughts on Mark Wade's time on Daredevil? Also, I thought the Brian Michael Bendis Moon Knight run was great. P.S. Here's five bucks. Keep on keeping on. Well, thank you very much, Niaj Yod. And um, if I didn't pronounce that right, my apologies, but thank you very much. Um, I like Mark Wade, and I thought he, he uh, you know, he came in at the right time with the, with the right idea. Daredevil had been really depressing for a while like uh, dark street crime awesome daredevil works well for that but there just been a few too many storylines with like daredevil losing loved ones losing his job losing losing everything just losing 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 and sometimes i mean we kind of want to see these guys overcome this stuff right like the fun isn't in seeing them suffer it's that they suffer and then we get to see them overcome that and that's what makes them a hero and I thought Mark Wade's uh, Daredevil run came in and like, you know, sort of lightened that up uh, at the right time. Uh, it's not always the right time. You know, you need some variety, but I thought he did a good job on that. Um, glad that you enjoyed his, uh, the Bendis Moon Knight run. Um, didn't work for me, but it didn't make me like, you know, dislike Bendis in general. It was just like, nah, this one's a mess for me. For me, to poop on. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Whoa, okay, another super chat. Let's see. Bowser the dog says, 
Sorry to chime in on an old topic, but X-Men Apocalypse was complete tripe. When they did Apocalypse's origin, I could not take the movie seriously. Yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, I don't think Apocalypse is all that interesting an X-Men villain in general. He just has so many powers and... You know, his motivation of just like, oh, I only want the strong to survive. It's like, well, where's the sort of logical end point to, to, to all that? Like, I just don't get where that goes. The idea of having somebody that powerful is cool sometimes. Um, I, like, I like the idea of him corrupting characters and turning them into horsemen. I think that that's been interesting. Um, the only time I really found Apocalypse as a character all that interesting was in Uncanny X-Force, where he essentially possesses Archangel for a while, and then his, you know, cloned reborn form is taught by Phantom X and Deadpool how to be sort of a moral, upstanding guy and, like, give him a second chance. I, so I liked that, but in general, it's not my favorite villain. He's just, he's, al he's almost too powerful. Whoa, 10 Canadian dollars. Thank you, Christopher Donaldson. No question, just a generous super chat. I will, uh, I will endeavor to spend that on um, uh, Canadian comics on Saturday at the Comic-Con, okay? <laughs> Apocalypse looked like Ivan Ooze from the Power Rangers. Yes, go back to my literal first comic tropes video ever. And... I don't know why I mentioned Apocalypse, but I do, and I cut to a photo of Ivan Ooze. <laughs> Apocalypse is a social Darwinist, one of the most evil ideologies, philosophies, used to justify lots of bad behavior. Totally agree. But that's just a philosophy. It never made complete sense to me, like, why he has that philosophy, or exactly what his end game is you know it, it gets pretty muddled in a lot of the stories um i think just a lot of different writers have interpreted that very differently so yeah i don't know did i ever watch that video where reed richards defeats magneto with a wooden gun um was that from the comics? I thought that that was from an old cartoon, I guess. Um, I guess I've seen it, but it's been a long time, so it's it's hard to remember. Sometimes you, your head just fills up with all sorts of useless trivia, and uh, some of it gets a little muddled up there. All right, I got quiet for a minute there. I was just having fun with some details. What uh, what other questions are in there? Uh, who should I draw, asks Captain Slim Slam. I would say that you should draw Captain America. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, Apocalypse is a ripoff of Darkseid? Mm, maybe a little bit. I think that Thanos is the more obvious ripoff of uh, Darkseid, but that's okay. They went in different directions eventually, but there's a lot of similarities there. And I mean, it wasn't even a secret that it was a ripoff. Originally, Thanos was going to be more like um, uh, Metron from the New Gods. And the editor said, if you're going to rip off the New Gods, at least rip off the coolest one. And so they're like, okay. Jim Starlin's like, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs>
What other questions? Am I a kaiju fan? Yeah, definitely. Especially Godzilla. It's the classic. But yeah, I love giant monster stuff. Uh, Pacific Rim's fun. Um, I'll, I'll watch almost anything with a giant monster. Uh, you know, I'll watch, uh, what was it, like the giant claw or something? All sorts of like movies of uh, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I love that stuff. Definitely a fan of kaiju. In Boston, there used to be a, a wrestling uh, league, I don't know, maybe it's still around, called Kaiju Big Battle. And it was like pro wrestling, but everyone was in um, kaiju outfits. It's pretty cool. Fourth Wall World or Fantastic Four? Uh, for me, Fantastic Four. Big fan of like the idea of like a uh, family being uh, explorers. Yeah. But um. But there's a lot to like about the uh, the fourth world. Jack Kirby created a lot of amazing stuff. You know what's like underrated? I think is um, some of how Kirby used the fourth world in uh, his tenure on um, writing Jimmy Olsen. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I think. Have I read Tintin? Oh, yeah. Tintin was like one of the earliest comics I, I got exposed to. Um, for some reason, my um, my grandmother on my dad's side had a few Tintin comics. So I got to see those at an early age. And I always really loved uh, Hergé's uh, artwork. Um, definitely something I'll, I'll do an episode about at some point. There, there's There's a lot to say. And I mean, he really sort of created a style that is still a popular type of style for Bande Dessine, you know, French and Belgium comics to to tackle. Like that sort of like realistic mixed with cartoony. Um, Yeah, there's a lot to say there. Let's see. I've seen it on YouTube. Bunch of little building building models around a room. Oh, I missed something. Anyway. I think it's funny how Spider-Man defeated Sandman with a vacuum cleaner in the old comics. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that, like, villains sort of level up over time when they come back. So it's funny to look back at some of their early appearances and see how easily uh, they were defeated, uh... Like for when when a villain comes back and if it's like a popular story, they have to be a little more dangerous than the first time. So uh, it always sort of retroactively makes some of their early appearances funnier. That's kind of a common thing for for pretty much any recurring villain in superhero comics. Anybody else out there that's uh, watching this happen to be going to um, Comic Con? Uh, at all this weekend? Just curious. Um, favorite X-Men villain? Um, hmm, interesting question. Um, I guess Magneto's had the most cool stories, but, um, I think Sabretooth has often been, like, really well used, except he's definitely a little bit more of, well, he definitely is more of a Wolverine villain than a full X-Men villain, but sometimes he's been an X-Men villain. Um, he definitely has a lot of heavy ties to X-Men in general, um, and I think he, he, him for just sort of, like, how dangerous he is, you know, just how savage he is, that's, I think he's a really good one. Um, not a huge fan of like Mr. Sinister or Apocalypse. Um, Mystique and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants in the 80s was pretty good, but Mystique is kind of reformed. A lot of, you know what's cool about the X-Men? A lot of their villains, villains get reformed, more so than like anyone else. 
I mean, when you look at like the people that they've reformed, uh, Rogue, Mystique, Magneto, for a while, Sabretooth, um, uh, Emma Frost, it's pretty amazing like what they've done. It, it, it's, it's very hopeful when you look at it like in the abstract, like when you look at it like on a, on a big level. Um, so I like that, that the X-Men reform their villains. Very hopeful. Well, let's say it's only been 45 minutes, but I think I'm going to like call it um, at this point um, just because I'm working in a very weird sort of working area. I can't like really draw much further this way. And well, I'd love to like sort of add some tones to this, some like grays, but I just don't have access to that tonight. So I can't sort of continue that way. But, you know, um, I, I had some fun uh, doing some inking on this, trying to, like, figure out, like, exactly how I wanted to show the, the darkness here. Instead of, like, completely blacking it out, I did, did use a little bit of, like, empty, like, white space here and there to, like, imply that there's some depth in there and something going on. Um, I had a lot of fun working on the hair, and, I, like, that's something I would probably keep doing if I was doing this as, like, a finished piece. Um, I think... Uh, coming up with like hair is tricky but rewarding um, anyway um, I had fun tonight though I, 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 I this was a, a big challenge to draw like this way but thanks to all of you like there was a lot of really interesting questions and a lot of uh, a lot of great support so that's very encouraging I, I can't thank you enough um, if anyone watching this happens to be going to New York Comic Con on Saturday specifically Right now, that's the only day I plan on uh, attending. Um, if you happen to see me, definitely say hello. You know what I look like. I don't necessarily know what you look like, um, but I would love to. Uh, I would love to say hello to anyone who uh, who would like to 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 talk. You know, um, I, I I owe you guys. Like uh, this channel is nothing without its audience, and uh, I'm very very lucky. To have that audience and I and I'm aware of that and I'd love to thank anyone that's brave enough to to approach and say hello uh, so if that happens if you're going definitely say hello and just check the chat to see if anyone here is mentioning anyone. Roy Scheider looks younger in your drawing maybe he does a little maybe he does you know I was thinking of like sort of adding a few lines to his face um, but I wasn't sure if that would have been overdoing it um, Maybe I'll give him just a little bit of uh, some lines here. I know I said I was like about to end and then all of a sudden I like can't. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, this is like, you know, the, the distant lens. I didn't want to like add too much detail on that. I think that that could be like, you know, look, look good with uh, the right coloring. I don't know. It's interesting, like a few lines can make a big difference, can't they? I'll just add a little more stubble and a few more lines of distinction, because uh, I kind of like that opinion of uh, he looks younger here, and, and, I, and I didn't necessarily mean to make him look younger, per se. But uh, I'm not going off direct reference here. I'm going off my memory. So that's, uh, I think it's got to be pretty darn good for memory. I think it's, I feel really strongly about that. Clint Eastwood glare. Yeah, well, I mean, he's also looking into the sun, so I figured he, he'd be, like, sort of squinting with his eyes, like, uh, however I uh, interpret that. But um, this was fun, guys. Thank you so much, uh, ladies and gents, for, for jumping in and uh, following along. Um, this was definitely a blast. Uh, I didn't quite do an hour, and I tried to uh, go for an hour, but um, not tonight. Um, somebody asked, what am I drawing tomorrow? Well, the big thing about Inktober is, like, not planning ahead. Like, you just start doing it, like, when it's basically time, or at least that day. Um, so let me just at least, though, look at the Inktober 2019 prompts. 
Um, I'm just looking that up on my uh, computer here to the side, and I'll uh, see. So tomorrow would be day four, freeze. And I've sort of been doing like a pure horror theme with uh, the, the, the choices I've been making. So I, I'm going to try to think if there's anything like a horror movie specifically related to the cold. But that said, a good one. I don't want to draw like, you know, Jack Frost, the killer snowman. I, I don't personally have <laughs> interest in doing that. But um, tomorrow's prompt is uh, freeze. So we'll see where that goes. We'll see. Yeah, a lot of people said The Shining and oh, The Thing, The Thing. Yeah, those are that, that that's a good one that's set um in the cold weather. Uh Ice Age. Yeah. I'm going to just draw that uh what is that? I've never watched any of the Ice Age movies. I was just about to say that squirrel thing. I don't know what, what that is. I don't know. Uh all I know is that like uh Ray Romano is in those movies and he's always like, "Oh, it's hard being a woolly mammoth." Deborah. So uh <laughs> we'll see where that goes. Uh yeah, tomorrow I should be here at a hopefully a reasonable hour. I'm 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 on East Coast time now. Going to go out and have uh, some New York adventures tomorrow, but then I will uh I will be live streaming at the end of the day now that I know that I can come up with a workable setup. And uh thank you everybody. I'm going to take off. Uh until next time, keep reading comics.